Okay, this video is going to show you how to get multiple joypads working with RetroPie. I'm using USB joypads, um, but I'll go over how this sort of work with um, different combinations, if them two the same, two different ones, and uh, how to configure that automatically and uh, on a static sort of basis. So if we log in to the Raspberry Pi, log in as uh, Pi, uh, password for Raspberry. And there are separate videos out there to show how to connect to the Raspberry Pi remotely like this using PuTTY. Um, that's on one of my videos, you can see if you list them all out. Or separately, you can just do this directly on the TV anyway. I don't think we need any network connections to do this, so you don't need it hooked up to Wi-Fi or, or network to do this. Now, I've got plugged into my Raspberry Pi at the moment two USB joypads that are the same. They're both the iBuffalo joypad. Uh, they look really very, very similar to uh, the original sort of SNES layout with the four buttons YXBA so two of those are connected but to configure this obviously RetroPie has got to see these USB connections and it can be useful just to debug at the start before you go further make sure the, ret the Raspberry Pi can see these joypads and to list them you type LS USB like that and it will show you what the Raspberry Pi can see at the minute and you can see that it's got five devices the first three are all the inbuilt inherent um, USB devices that are on the Raspberry Pi so it's not actually something plugged in it's just internal references to the hub itself so you can see on device one two and three they're what you'll get on on all of them my Raspberry Pi I'm demonstrating this on is a B model um, I think a B plus would report pretty much the same but this is a B so the top three are always going to be there and the two that I've got plugged in are here they're like I said earlier they're exactly the same and uh, you can see that here sort of manufactured or the USB configuration is is owned by this company so it's identified there and the first four digits you can see here is the manufacturer and the second set of four digits refers to the device itself so it's just a reference and there's a web page where you can look all these up and see all of the devices and who owns them what the um, name of the spec is so you can uh, easily have a look at those I'll put it in the description and What's useful to know, I mean you don't have to do any of this, but it's useful to debug. What's useful to know is what the RetroPie um, Raspberry Pi system will see when you plug these in. And we can get more detail on those based on this ID here. So I'm just going to paste a line in to the Raspberry Pi. So if you type in sudo to do this as an administrator so you've got the rights, uh, lsusb like we did above, that will output the device and um, the details hyphen D gives uh, specific device details so we're just going to output details of one of these and this is the location on the Raspberry Pi where they're connected so that's always the same you just type dev forward slash bus forward slash USB and then you've got two numbers at the end the first one is the bus and you can see here that the Raspberry Pi has only got one bus here so it's bus one so it's always going to be 001 so you just type 001 and then the very last value is the device you want details on. And so if I wanted to specifically see details on this device here, I type 006 like that, 006. Press enter. There'll be quite a lot of output. Okay, so it's scrolled off the screen, but you can um, put it here. You've got the sidebar scroller so we can go back up. And the value we want to see up here, there we go. That's where we type the line and the output's here, just confirming the device and down here the i product value is usb comma two axis eight button gamepad and that is is part of what's used in um, in the output to refer to this so we'll see that appear again later but it's it can be useful to know what the the sort of product name of what you're dealing with is so you can reference it later but that's just a an fyi really you don't need to do that it's just sometimes helpful okay um so as I said earlier, there are two ways to deal with multiple controllers in RetroPie. You can use the auto configure option where RetroPie or rather RetroArch imports the controller files and deals with them for you, or you can hard code them in the RetroArch.cfg file. Um, I much prefer the auto config approach, it really works well for me. Um, I don't have a need for statically updating the RetroArch.cfg at all but maybe there's situations out there where it's useful for you to do that. So I'll cover that as well. So what I'm going to do, at the moment, the system's got no idea, or RetroPie and RetroArch have no idea about these controllers. So I'm going to use the, the easiest way to configure these, which is using the RetroPie script. And by default, 
we are in, if I press type ls to list it out, we're in this directory here. And I want to go into the RetroPy setup script. And do bear in mind, I've got a couple of other videos on controllers, which could be worth watching before this one, just to get an understanding of how the USB controllers work. And what I'm going to try and focus on on this one is the multiple element of it. Uh, CD RetroPy um, hyphen setup, like that, press enter and list this directory and I'm going to run the RetroPy script which is sudo, again just run it as admin to get the right rights, um, full stop forward slash RetroPy underscore setup dot sh. And again, although some of this might seem a bit command line intensive, you only ever have to do it once. So it's uh, kind of a one-off deal, configure it as you want it, and then never have to do this again. Now in the RetroPy script, there will be lots of options, but we're just sort of interested in the um, controller side of things. This is saying at the bottom here that I haven't got much space left on my card. That's because I haven't expanded it yet. You probably won't get this message, but I'm just going to ignore it for the minute and say yes. Okay, so when you're in the menu, you want option three, setup. And then you want the option that registers the RetroArch controller. And it's important not to run this when you've got a ROM running because then um, the joystick config can't grab the control of the controller because the game's got it open. So you do make sure you're not running your game when you're trying to configure the controller. Um, okay, so just checking a list here, make sure I cover everything. Um, Right, well, as you saw earlier, I've got two controllers in there the same. And if you've got two the same, you don't need to do this twice. You just do it the once, and the system will use the file that you generate twice. So we'll see that happen in a second. I'm going to hit enter on this register RetroArch controller option. And it says connect only the controller to be registered for RetroArch. So if you've got um, other joypads in there or um, other USB devices it's worth unplugging any everything you can just to make sure that the Raspberry Pi picks up the, the right button presses from the right device. So I've got I've got two plugged in but they're both the same so it doesn't really matter. But if you do have um, different USB joypads plugged in just put the one in that you want to track here. Okay click OK and it says okay I've, it's detected it and you can see here the reference to that product name we saw earlier. So it's, it's just using, reusing that for reference there. And then it just mentions about uh, make sure that there isn't a button already pressed on the controller so it can correctly detect the, the right button presses. So make sure there's nothing pressed there. Um, when you're happy with the joypad is in the state it should be, press enter and it says press B, press Y, press select, press start. And you can see on the right there, it's showing the, the values it's detecting, left, right, A button, X button, L and R. And on this controller I haven't got any more buttons, so um, I just wait for these to time out. It's set to about four seconds each to time out. Um, also, you can see at the top there, configuring the buttons for player one on joypad zero. When you boot into a game, you'll notice uh, on the on the bottom of the game itself in yellow text which joypads it's detected so it's quite clear on um, which ones it's seen so you don't have to worry about has it worked or not okay this is nearly timed out and what it would do at the end is write this file out There we go, okay, so the configuration file has been saved and it's given the file name that it's been saved as and it's used the product ID that we saw earlier. I always sort of use that as the file. The file name itself doesn't seem to matter. You could rename that to whatever you want. It, the contents seem to matter a lot more. Um, and will be used for, by RetroArch from now on whenever it's controlled, so connected. So you can um, hot swap these as well. If, you've, if you use the auto configuration, you can um, you can pull them out, reconnect different ones as you're playing the game. Um, I don't think a lot of people would necessarily do that, but it's easy if you want to quickly re-choose a different controller for a different game or something like that. Okay, uh, it goes back to the menu, and I'm going to cancel out of that, and cancel out of that, and that's all you have to do there. Now we're going to go and have a look at the file that it's created. 
and um, again I'm using 2.4 so if you change directory forward slash apt forward slash retropy forward slash emulators forward slash retroarch now if you're using 2.3 retroarch I think is capitalized the R and the A so you change that path just really slightly uh, configs list out that directory or to get it a bit more easy to see I put ls hyphen lah now you've got dates and you can quickly see down here they're all January the 4th except the one I've just done January the 11th so you know that's the one you've just written and the one that you'd be interested in and that's the file that RetroArch will use on those emulators so again just a reminder this is for RetroArch based emulation if you use if you're going to emulate um, or run a game in MAME or FBA, it's not going to use this configuration and it'll be a, a separate approach. Uh, there's separate videos to show how to um, get multiple controllers working with those um, emulators. But if it's through RetroArch, which covers a lot of um, systems, then it's this method. Um, we've got the file there. Okay, now we can read that file. sudo nano, sudo to run it with um, sort of higher permissions. Nano is a text editor and then space USB. To save typing at all you can just as you start typing US if you type um, tab it will auto complete so we can have a look at that file. Now I have got two controllers the same in there at the moment so I'm not going to generate it twice they both use this file effectively and that's fine as it is it tells me what buttons got logged for what um, button presses. Um, what I'm going to do though in this is and what you might want to do is put in your hotkeys there's a separate um, video detailing how these work, so I'm not going to go over that, it's just how you could put them in. Um, if you type input underscore enable underscore hotkey button, you can see here I've said button 8 is the hotkey, which in this case is not listed, so it's, that's the wrong number. What, you, what I'd want is select button to be pressed, and you can see above um, here my select button on this controller is a 6, so I'm going to change that to a 6. And I'm going to change the exit emulator um, to the start button, which is a seven. So I change that to seven. Now, oops, seven. Now, if I'm in a game and I hold down select, tap seven, then it will um, quit out, which is really useful to save um, the keyboard plugged in or something like that. Uh, that's that file there. And to note, when you have got two players that use this, only player one for whatever reason, certainly in my testing anyway, will have control of the hotkeys. Even if you've got the hotkey set up for player two as well, it's just player one that will be able to manage the hotkeys. So to get around any sort of um, problem of a controller not being able to set the hotkeys, just make sure you put your hotkey set up in all of the different controller configs if you have different USB types. In this case, they're both the same, so I only have to put it here and they'll work. I um, hope that makes sense. If not, put it in the comments and I'll, um, I'll help up clarify. Okay, so that's um, everything we need to do there. And you don't even need to put the hotkey edits in if you don't want. It's just helpful. Control X, and it says at the bottom, do you want to save it? Press yes. And the file name appears and you press enter. And it drops out of there. And, and you'll notice... Uh, well, actually, let's let's check out the retroarch file first. So that's the the controller file. If I had a different joypad, which I could run through, um, actually, we could run through that one now. If I plug a different joypad in, okay. So this would work. This would be the process if you're going to use two different controllers um, but again because this is an auto configuration area it, it doesn't matter if you put them configure them both now or later or whenever you want I'm going to go back to that home directory which we started in which is CD and then the tilde sign um, go back into RetroPy uh, hyphen setup and in here I'm going to run that configuration file again which is RetroPy underscore setup.sh oh yeah that's I'm gonna run that uh, CD there we go CD forward slash uh, full stop forward slash retro by setup and it'll probably complain about I haven't got much space again I'll just press yes okay and get okay, setup and register retro controller 
This is the only one I've got plugged in at the minute. And it says get ready because you only get four seconds for each one. If you miss it, it times out and doesn't log the button. And you can see at the top now, this is detected as a USB gamepad. This is a, um, it's the same layout as the iBuffalo, except it's a Retrolink. It's a Retrolink brand and all the buttons are sort of either light purple or dark purple. I'll put links to this in the description, but um, the, the manufacturer is obviously different and the iProduct name is USB gamepad. Okay, I'm going to press enter and it wants B, Y, select, start, up, down, left, right, A, X, and the left button and the right button. And then again, I haven't got any more buttons on that. Um, okay. Let that, let those time out. And what this would do, this would just write a new file in that directory we saw a minute ago, and that would be ready to use for RetroArch when it sees uh, that controller is plugged in. So I could have one of these plugged in and one of the iBuffaloes plugged in that I saw earlier. And if I was going to use one of these controllers and one of the iBuffaloes at the same time, I'd put the hotkeys into the, the new file as well to make sure that if that was player one, the hotkey process would work. Okay, so it's written that, it says uh, same as before. Cancel that, cancel that, and let's go into uh, the folder we were in a minute ago. Okay, change directory um, into APT RetroPy Emulator RetroArch. As I said, if you've got 2.3, this would be marginally different, in which case uh, you just change the case on that, or you could do it. Sort of one step at a time if you want. So you go CD APT, CD RetroPy, CD emulators, and you can confirm by listing that directory what how RetroArch is named. Um, I'm just going to do that because that's that's the directory name there. Um, and then it's configs is where the files are. And again, if I do ls lah, you can see here on the output that uh, again I've it's updated or created a new file USB gamepad and I can edit that in the same way as before, USB gamepad, and it's got the buttons there. And then again, I could simply copy in the hotkey emulation, um, hotkey exit buttons, which are like that. And this, this is the right combination here. So the enable hotkey button is eight, which is select, and then to exit, press nine, which is the start button. So that would work fine on that controller so control x to make save the changes press yes and enter to confirm and that's it those those are ready and, and waiting for retroarch so now if we look at the retroarch um, folder itself and again just the thing i said before but the hotkeys will only work um, in player one so bear that in mind uh, cd cd dot dot just goes back a directory you can see the directory changing backwards when the and here we want to go into the configs directory and then the all directory and if I list that directory you can see the RetroArch TFG and that's the RetroArch file that's used for all of the games. There are separate system based ones which are, I should get back a directory, cd dot dot, you can list them there, see all the system based ones and there's a RetroArch.cfg in each of those folders so anything you put in a RetroArch CFG in those folders will overwrite what you do in the all. So it's useful if you want to have a shader per system or control setup per system. But for the moment, we're just going in here. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at that RetroArch file. CD nano RetroArch. Again, this is the .cfg. This is the main file. It's got quite a lot of options there. Okay. Um, right, the first thing we're going to do is when you when you do load a game and it's using the uh, auto config files, you see at the bottom yellow text, and if you've got two controllers in, it flips quite quickly, but it shows joypad index zero, and it gives you the name just to show you which one is um, player one, because joypad index zero is player one, and then it flip and say joypad index one, which is the second one, so it's a bit confusing because zero is one and one is two. Um, it show that controller as well and the text can run off the screen so to set that if you hit control w in um, 
in Nano here. It's got at the bottom search, it just helps you search. And we're going to look for OSD. And it's brought us here. And if we get up a little bit here, it says video underscore font underscore size equals 16. I think default is 32. Change it down to 16 and you'll see it all on, on the screen at once if it's running off. So it's a useful thing to change when you're trying to see is the system auto detecting those files. So there's that value. And separately, uh, just copy that here. Here we go, input auto detects what we're looking for. So again, if I do control W and type down the bottom here, input underscore auto detect, it brings us up here. And this enables input auto detection, will attempt to auto configure joypads. And that's set to true, which is obviously what you want. If you want it to pick up those files that we just looked at, uh, if this is false, it's not going to do that. I think true is default, so you shouldn't have to change that, but it's it's really useful to make sure if that's set. If you're going to hard code the joypad controllers in this file, which we can do in a minute, I would definitely set that to false. Otherwise, you're importing some files and then overwriting it in this file as well, and it could just get a bit confusing. So if you're going to use auto detection um, with the joypad, set this to true. If you're not, set it to false. Okay. Um, and I suppose one one side effect of this is when you use the auto detection, I'm not sure how you can say um, always use this controller as player one and this one as two because it won't necessarily know which you plug in at the time. So it can't set, I don't think it can set, this one's always going to be player one and this one's always going to be player two. But typically if you put two joypads in, they tend to it does tend to stay the same. One of them will be the first joypad you know and the second one it would be different so you know on that basis it will detect and stay with the right player one player two setup it shouldn't be too much to worry about um, but it it's that's a difference between the the auto element and um, how you do that by uh, managing it in this file okay so that's set to true and um, that I think is largely all you'll need to do here um, uh, as I said before, you can go to the system specific folders in the RetroArch in there and um, set particular values so you, you'd want to check they're not overwriting anything if you've got a problem. Um, and that, that will be it really. Save that file, make sure that's set to true and boot up and you'll see that um, the controllers are detected and I mean I could show you a demo of a game with them working but you just see a demo of a game with them working it won't really tell you an awful lot. Uh, one other value just slightly further down here is worth looking at make sure this one's populated because if you are or using the auto configuration files you'll see here that this is the directory where it will look for them in. Again it's uncommented so that line there hasn't been set to anything there. Um, so it will use it, joypad auto config dir equals and then this is the one we were in a minute ago, apt retropy emulators retroarch configs and it just fish out the, um, the controller based on whatever's plugged in and I've been quite happily using two controllers the same that use one of those files or um, one of each like we just configured at the moment and they both come up uh, and, it, and it clarifies at the bottom, it does say joypad index 0 and it'll tell you which one's um, 0, which is player 1 so you can tell and uh, and that's it so separately another way of doing this is to do this manually and not use these auto configs at all in which case you change this value here to false like that and, uh, and save that and then in here we'd look for manually putting in the joypad buttons again we can search the control w and type joypad buttons and we've got the section here and you can see by default these are commented out so they're not used and if you want to activate those you just take that hash mark out like this and for usb controllers as opposed to say um, the Xbox or PS3 controllers, I haven't looked at those, but they probably work in a similar way. But this is specifically where you've got those sort of USB retro-like um, controllers. I've got here play. If I go there, you've got um, the A button, the B button, Y, X, start button. Then you've got select here, uh, the left button, which is the sort of shoulder button, and the right shoulder button there. Now the player one left, right, up, down. 
that's if you've got um, sort of an analog uh, stick on the controller, I think. So you don't need, on certainly on the, the ones I've got where you've just got the D-pad, you don't need to use these. Um, so you can leave those commented because there is no analog element to it. But if I scroll down a little bit, um, it's got Axi for the RetroArch D-pad, and this is the up, down, left, right values. Uh, up here, you'll notice that I've got for A button at zero, um, for B button one, Y button three. I've typed those in earlier, so you, yours are probably blank. But it says here um, at the top, figure these numbers out by using the RetroArch um, Joy Config, which is what we did at the start with the Auto Config, and you saw in those files they're the numbers, so you can fish them out of there to see what they are, or you can just go in the uh, RetroArch folder and run RetroArch Joy Config on its own to see what these um, numbers are on your joypad. And this is where the RetroPie team have pre-built a lot of these contr uh, configs in that folder. There's about 15 of them now, all set up, so quite often you won't need to edit them at all. Okay, so if you're going to hard code uh, the controller in here, whatever uh, the USB detects is button 0, button 1, button 3, or 2, or 7, uh, that would be player one, so you can fix a controller to a player position. Um, down here again, I'd have to get rid of the comment factor out, make sure that's not there, and um, the difference with the, noting the axis on the D-pad, um, you've got to make sure that it prefixes with a minus or a plus, so these are always minus something or plus something, and that happens to be what the values are on, um, on the controller that I'd want to use as player one. Now, obviously, multiple controllers is going to be more than one player, so you'd have to set this for each player that you want to set up. Uh, again, you can find the button codes by using that earlier process, but to add them in, um, we're in now, now I'm using the mouse and selecting the player one section there. Now, because I've selected that, that's automatically copied in this interface. So now I've got my player one settings down here, for example, and maybe there. I can put, I can paste these in. You paste with clicking the right mouse button. Click the right mouse button. There, it's just pasted these in. But I now want to say I've got another controller for player two, and I just change one, literally one to two, there, there, one to two, one to two, like that. And this controller may have the same. If it's the same controller, it have the same codes, or you might have a different controller, and obviously that'll have different codes. Whatever those codes are, you can just type them in like that. And again you would have to do it for the axi point here. So you can simply copy the axi for the controller side of things there. Scroll down there. And I might put player two's option there. Right mouse click to paste. And I might, for this other controller, I don't know, maybe the left axi reports as a 12, but you can find out whatever yours particular ones are. And, oh, and obviously I would change that. So for player two, it's like that, and I think this goes all the way down to about player eight, so it can handle about eight. Although on the retro uh, Raspberry Pi, there's only four USB ports anyway, so I don't know if you can get more than four. Uh, maybe with the hub, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so that's that's how you can do that. And above, we disabled the auto config. Then, when you go into a game, you won't get any of the yellow text at the bottom because we've disabled pulling in those files, and. Um, although you don't get the yellow text, it will still work because you specified here player one has got these buttons, player two have got those buttons. Um, so it will still detect and work and play as uh, one and two separate players and it would be specific to that. But I don't tend to do it in this hard coded retroarch way because it means that you've always got to have that controller ready for player one or player two, which is fine if, I suppose, if you never change the controllers. But if you do want a bit of flexibility, the auto config files seem to be a lot better at it. But like I say before, one thing I would do is um, at the top here of the import, make sure that if you're going to use, uh, where are we? Blah, 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 blah. Up a bit there. If you're going to use the auto detect, set that to true. And if you're not, set it to false. I don't think it's a good idea to keep that as true and then also edit below as we did in this file. Um, so. Just to finish on that section here, and um, down here, you can tweak this. So you could say, um, this is the that maps the joypad to the player. By default, joypad index zero is player one, and joypad index um, joypad index 
one is player two but you could always change that um, by changing these numbers here but it's not often a lot of reason to do it but you've got the option if you need to um let's see if there's anything else anyone's asked i think that's covered pretty much how to how to manage multiple usb controllers with retroarch and um, this is the the file that it it deals with there i've uncommented the values hard-coded the the numbers in there um, you put your own based on you know detecting the usb that we saw earlier save that and uh, and you should be away any problems put it in the comments and we're trying to make this useful to make you know make it easy to use multiple controllers with retroarch which it, it should be really there shouldn't be any problems um yeah any questions just ask thanks